Phase 2 Season of Discovery has now been out for a couple weeks. We've had a decent amount of resets, and I've been pumping, and I did about 20 to 30 hour pump to 40. We were, I think, 46 on our server to complete No More Gone. We did it on the second day, I guess, technically, but first day. Um, and I've got my Epic Helm. I've got on some gear from the raid. I've got it my freaking gizmo blade. However, the issue is I don't have an offhand. And the offhand that you want for Shadow Priest is freaking Umbral Crystal. And it was 84 gold. And then we had the reset on Tuesday and it jumped up to 200 because all of them expired. So I've been waiting for them to go back down. So hopefully it'll bump up when we get there. But it has been now two weeks, three weeks. I Last time I did it um, was four days I think before phase two dropped but um it's time to update where is it our tier list sorry I believe that's where it was and with the new data that we have in work off logs this is my personal data sorry uh, as you can see I am cranking and I'm just very mad at our vicious fallout because we keep fucking it up uh, in terms of pumping hard, not in terms of killing it, um, keep having some fuck ups, keeping forgetting to do some shit. So this is really helping me back. But eighth best in uh, Thermal Plug, which is pot. But uh, we have data in terms of healers. We have t damaged data. We have updates to classes in terms of balance changes, and the data on changes with that. And so it's time to start looking at our tier list and reworking it around from what it used to be. So. First up, we're going to do our healer tier list. Uh, we're going to do all three of them in this video, by the way. Because it's not a brand new one, and it's, it's an update. But first off, we're going to be moving around our healer tier list. And the things that are going to be moved around is that Arcane is going to be dropping down. Resto Shaman, or Druid, is going to be dropping down. And Resto Shaman and Holy Paladin are going to be moving up. So the reason for this, and the reason why Disc is sharing his own tier, is because if we look at... Healing done. Priest is just cranking along with Resto Druid as well. And their damage is, again, not the worst. It's not really what they're there for. Um, they're, they're there to heal. Um, but it's not the worst. It's middle of the pack because obviously you have Resto Druids and Arcane Mages pumping damage. And then you have the other ones pumping healing. Um, it just Priest brings power infusion. You can power and shield to save people. You can renew if you want to. Prayer mending is broken. Penance is fucking broken. And so it's just an S tier on its own. Rest and Druid went down to A tier um, simply because it's having a bit of mana issues. Um, it's constantly feeling mana starved on the last two bosses. And so they're having to click the buttons a lot, taking more damage, uh, diverting your attention from being able to do stuff. It's definitely still the second best healer. Um, it's second best in damage and it's second best in actual healing if i can get to that second best in actual healing is by all means a really good healer and it's almost up here still with discipline priest but because of its mana issues it's falling a little bit behind holy paladin is moving up because it's as i had pr predicted before it is doing really good healing however it's damage is if we let me go to healers is uh, abysmal um but the reason it's up here is because the last two bosses of the raid by the way this TLS is more so for the last two bosses of the raid the or last three i guess we'll say um but the other ones are really kind of a pushover and so we don't really need to build around them we're more so building around the last three or last two bosses of the raid because that's the one that's giving most people issues and speaking of said issues Healing is one of them. They both, if thou, yeah, I'm going to say last two, require a ton of healing. And so Holy Paladin is going up on the tier list because it has that healing that it needs to offer, has that utility that it needs to offer. As well as, will, as we'll get into later, it also brings in blessings that others may not be able to bring because you're not have you don't have the spots. So because of its utility is bringing, because of the healing it's doing, it's going up into the A tier. It's not as good as the other two, but it's definitely a really good option. Resto Shaman, um, it's also going to be coming up from the B tier to the A tier. Um, it's 
Again, it's not the best in terms of damage. It's right behind Priest, although Priest did just get buffed with the Void Plague buff. Um, however, it's healing isn't amazing, but the real reason why it moved up a tear is its single target healing is really good, and you, you get the, uh, what's it called? Chain healing. As well as all of the utility that it brings, the mana that you, re you regen, it's mostly just there for the utility, and it's being brought by a lot of horde raids. Um, really nice to have. Personally, I would still bring a disc and resto, but Shaman's not a bad option. Now, Arcane Mage moved down to the B tier. Why is that? It's doing the most damage in terms of healers, but its healing is kind of spread out depending. So part of the reason is because it may have this much of like a, uh, what's it called? An end, like both ends, I guess you could say it's has a very high, high end, but on the median, it's not giving him as enough healing as you would like. Also, typically it's very single target healing. Um, because people are not going to take massive regeneration. They're typically taking living flame. And so the amount of people that you can heal isn't very high. Um, and it doesn't really bring very much in terms of utility either. So once we get more into farm, I can see Arcane rising in the tier list. But right now, as we need more healing than damage from healers, it's just not really it. And then we have Holy Priest, which it it brings healing, but this priest brings like the same amount of healing, and then it also brings power and fusion, and it also brings divine spirit, and it also brings better power or fortitude, and it also brings better shields. It's it's just better, unfortunately, uh, for Holy Priest. So that's it for healers. Let us move on to tanks. Let me go ahead and reset this and find what it was before before the predictions were where is my prop element here we go this goes here this goes here and this goes here so for tanks we were half correct and half wrong so where this is going to be moving uh, obviously demonology warlock is absolutely destroying Everything else is going to be coming out of eight, and Prop Paladin is also destroying, by the way. Um, everything else, though, is going to be coming out of eight, S tier. So, Prop Warrior is having a hell of a lot of threat issues, and its damage is not very high. And so, unfortunately, Prop Warrior is just really struggling in this phase. It's pretty much all I need to say for it. It's just not it this phase. Everything is really better. Um, Enhancement Shaman. I haven't really heard much about it because I'm an Alliance player, but I can guarantee you it's doing better than a Prot Warrior. So it's going to be higher than a Prot Warrior. Um, Feral Druid, we actually tested out tonight in my raid. Um, Feral Druid wasn't having issues with threat anymore. It was doing decent damage, and the issue it was having was actually surviving. Because they need to run wild strikes, and so they're not able to tank or take one of those runes that will help them survive. And because of that, it's it just can't be S tier. But it was doing everything else good. It was just kind of struggling with surviving. I think that it'll get better as they get more gear. They can actually survive as well as if you actually have a feral tank built for it, it'll be able to survive a lot easier. As our feral tank was our normal feral, just like the cat that just happened to go. Uh, bear so it could have just been that that it just wasn't geared for it but um otherwise it was working pretty well actually so uh feral druid is going to be going up which is really nice because that's what what brought them up was the buffs that happened recently pretty much and it, the buffs 100 percent helped feral now you might be wondering why is sub rogue up here so sub rogue is not up here to be a main tank um it is up in a tier because it is a pretty good off tank um it does take a lot of damage when it does get hit, but it does a lot of dodging. So depending on what it is tanking, typically it's going to be like the dragon or menagerie, or if you want to have it like do chopper for some reason. Um, and the, honestly, your main tank should just be taking chopper and uh, the main boss, and you should be just fine. But um, if you ever need an off tank at some point, sub rogue is actually like the tank rogue is not bad. 
Um, I don't know, but Proud Paladin. Proud Paladin is doing really good. Um, it's able to take a lot of damage. It brings the blessings. Um, the only issue it is having with right now is that it's taking a bit of time in order to generate its threat. Um, otherwise, Prop Paladin is absolutely amazing. If you give your Prop Paladin like two to three seconds as the boss starts, you should be totally fine. Um, it's just they need that little bit of ramp up time to get going. And then Demonology Warlock is obviously just insane right now. Um, they can kite everything a lot easier because they're ranged and they don't need to be in melee to keep everything. So whenever they have to kite things, they're not going to necessarily be losing threat, i.e. the last boss when he has his flamethrower. The tank kind of has to be away in hopes that he holds threat the entire time if you're having issues with that. Warlock tank is so good for it because he could just spam a searing pain while he's running away. Warlock tank is just really good right now, and I highly suggest you do you try it out if you haven't. So that is really it for tanks. Now we're going to move on to our last section, which is going to be the DPS section. So let me find out where we ended. <laughs> where we ended um, going into the patch, which uh, some things we got quite wrong and some things we got quite right. Uh, for one, well, actually, let me let me let me get it up on the screen. For, let's let's get where we were. Let's, this, this is where we were at the end at the going into the patch before we knew anything. This was our predictions. Okay, let me get all of this up real quick. I have it on my other monitor, sorry. Once it's up, we should be good. Uh, this, by the way, this doesn't, I'm not, so I'm just, whichever the build is currently for Rogue, that'll be the one up here, okay? So just go with that, okay? Um, Cause I, I, they keep swapping between combat and assassination. I don't remember which one they're on right now. Um. Uh, what else am I missing? That goes there. That goes there, and that goes there. Okay. So what is being moved around? Well, first of all, let's take a look at what it was last time. What, what, were, we, what were we absolutely wrong about? Um, and then Hunter, uh, yeah, that goes down there. Um, let me just change this real quick. Other spec is way better. Uh, yeah, so MM was completely wrong. MM was going down here. Um, for the reason of our survival hunter is going up here because survival hunter is cranking. Uh, if we simply look at the damage, survival hunter is doing amazing at the highest end. It's being beat out by fire mage and DPS warlock. However, on average, it is doing a little bit more than them. Uh, the issue I have with melee hunter is that it's kind of really RNG. Um, you're really fishing for blocks of your raptor strike and flanking strike. And so your DPS could either be up here or up here, depend or down there, depending on your RNG. So it's a very RNG heavy spec. However, even with that in account, it's still doing, on average, more DPS than everybody else. Um, but at the very highest end, obviously, it's lower than a fire mage and a DPS rollout. But because of just simply that, as well as it brings, it's a hunter. You're gonna want a hunter in every single cop, at least one of them, because of heart of the uh. Sorry, aspect of the lion. So you're you're gonna want a hunter. S tier damage brings utility as well. Uh, what next change? Fury warrior is going down to A tier. So fury warrior, you might say, is all the way down here. Um, why is it in A tier, not B tier? Uh, it really helps out those melee comps, even though spell cleave is really the meta right now. And if we simply look at Let's go to the max parse. Obviously, you shouldn't be looking at max for everything. But if we look at the max parse, this is what I, I take with a grain of salt. This is probably what it's going to look like in the future as people get better gear um, and just learn the new play style of their class. I don't think it's going to look exactly like this, so take it with a grain of salt. But if we look at the highest parses for each thing, DPS Warrior is third. Um, as we go down... It does drop a little bit, so the worse the warrior is, the worse it is. But if we just, like, 99, 95th percentile, it's climbing. Um, and as we get going, it's going to get better. 
And because of Battle Shout, and it's getting scale in, it's got all of its other shouts, it's an A tier, uh, especially compared to the other melee. Um, next change. Let me just move all of this around, actually. Uh, first off, let's f figure out our S tier. Destruction and Fire. Um, definitely S tier. So they're up here with Melee Hunter. Uh, Fire Mage is going to just scale with Ignite. DPS Warlock is going to scale with its Spell Power Scaling, which are both just cracked. Um, they're going to do really well. And I think in, in the future, Melee Hunter is going to fall while they're going to keep climbing. And they're going to just become better than Melee Hunter. Um, unless they get nerfed. But currently, as it looking, I think they are better than than uh, stacking hunters. Uh, you which you are way better off stacking, in my opinion, actually a warlock. Even though you might say fire mage is doing a little bit better, I would rather stack a warlock because just like melee hunters, kind of like fishing for those procs, so is fire mage. They're fishing for the double crits to get the instant pyro. But warlock really isn't fishing for that. They're fishing for just crits still, but they're not looking for a double. Crit. So because of the more consistency of a Warlock, it's more so based on skill, I would rather st stack a DPS Warlock than a Fire Mage, which is why they're higher than Fire Mage. Next up, let's finish off our A tier. Oh no, let me, sorry, by the way, uh, boom. Only person who predicted Shadow was going to be good for this patch, just saying. Um, I actually would have had it S tier at the other one, but my as I said for that other tier list, working with McGill on it, they literally barely let me put it in a tier they wanted it in like b or b tier c tier even though like i said i talked about vampiric embrace and i think the damage was going to be good etc basically everything i said i believe was correct and it's kind of panning out like that um but they didn't want me to put it it but with the nerfs accounting for the nerfs i think it's low s high a tier on the border of it um it did lose about 20 to 30 DPS depending on uh, percentile but it's still pretty good for example last day it's not in the top 3 anymore it used to be like over here ish and now it's kind of down there um about even with the shamans so it's not amazing anymore but it's still insanely good it's still number 4 plus it brings all of its utility it allows your other priest to bring a uh, perk mending, so you bring homunculi. And I highly recommend if you are having any kind of healer issues, bring a shadow priest. It works in melee group or range group. If you are having tank healing issues and like all of your melee is taking a ton of damage, put it in the melee group. If your range is taking a lot of damage, put it in the range group. It's really good support of DPS. And I highly suggest you try it out if you haven't already. Um, Again, this is my current parses on it for me, so I believe I know what I talk about when I come to Shadow Priest. And I say that now because I do believe that over time, Shadow Priest is going to actually fall down, which is kind of what I said. It was like kind of high. I think it's going to eventually fall down to be maybe low A tier, high B tier by the time we get to like end up uh, fully geared, um, simply because it just, doesn't, it just doesn't scale very well. Our spell power scaling is like 42.9%. In comparison, a warlock scaling, scaling is like 72%. It's almost double. So we're not going to scale amazingly well. So we're going to slowly be falling down that DPS list, but our utility is going to just pretty much be carrying us. Uh, but for now, it's definitely S tier, uh, especially for those people still trying to complete the raid completely or get it on farm safely. Definitely bring a Shadow Priest. Next up. If I can find it. Um, Rep Paladins are going to be going down to the C tier. Now, why is this? Unfortunately, your DPS is trash. Um, and your blessings that you bring are kind of being brought by either the Holy Paladin or Prop Paladin. And because of that, there's not really a reason to bring Rhett. And so you're just down in the C tier. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. Um, your damage just isn't good, and all of your utility is being brought by other classes. Or, sorry, not other classes, other specs of the same class. Um, next up, Ellie Shaman. 
a shaman is cranking, it brings a lot of utility in its totems. Um, however, it's not an S tier because as I had before, a lot of shaman, a rest of shamans being brought by horde groups. And so they're kind of bringing the utility already. You can bring it for both groups, maybe, but unlikely. So it's not quite S tier, but it is definitely up in the A tier. Um, and just for its damage. Next up, we are going to be moving the Feral DPS down to be with our Enhancement Shaman. They're both doing... Well, Enhancement Shaman's doing pretty good. But if we look at the actual... What, where is it? Let me get out of this. All percentiles. So the Enhancement Shaman is actually more so down here as we were looking at the high end. But if we look at the entire thing, it's actually lower than a couple of arcane mage and rogue. Uh, it has a very wide range. so And it's more so in line with our feral druid in terms of its average. It actually has a lower median than feral druid. So because of that, they're kind of like the same tier because they both really are only being brought for wind fury. Um, feral druid now brings uh, some of that, that crif buff here group and Spinshawn brings some utility as well um besides wind fairy obviously um so they're b tier but they're not amazing i guess you could say definitely have one if you're running mainly clues though 100 percent, or any melee really in general I, I would always bring one of these unless you're running a, a pure spell leaf obviously uh next up really honestly arcane is damage isn't bad but you really should be playing a fire mage um, they just, they help out Destruction Warrior and they're just doing better in damage. You, I'm sorry, you should just be playing a Fire Mage or you're trolling. Um, Rogues fall even further down simply because there's no reason to bring them in PvE, I'm sorry. Your, your damage is mediocre. Um, if we look at the higher percentiles as well, you're slowly being crept by Warriors. If that, you're being beaten by Warriors, um, at the high, at the higher end, um, and you don't bring in any utility which a warrior brings. So I have zero reason to bring you over a warrior. You're like, well, they bring a cake. Well, warrior has a cake in this face, so your cake doesn't matter. Um, sorry, it's there's no reason to bring you. If if I could, I'm sorry. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. I would put you down here, but you don't have another better spec. So, sorry. Um, Balanced Druid. Balanced Druid is kind of down here with Feral Druid. It just doesn't, it brings the crit, but it's just not needed. Um, I would rather bring, because <laughs> the other ones are pumping so much harder. Um, I would, I, I'm putting you in other spec, it's way better, because you should just be playing a Feral Druid or a Resto, a Resto Druid. Um, they definitely got better uh, with the new phase, but then they kind of got nerfed. Um, their damage was like, I think, fifth. Uh, but now it's just fallen with the nerf, and they aren't as very good in PvP either. Um, because of that, I would just play Breast or Druid or Feral DPS. I'm I'm sorry, it's just you're probably not going to be brought to a raid. Um, this is really the tier list that we're ending up with. This is about what everything is uh is at. And just to show you quick compositions, I have an Alliance comp and a Horde comp right on the screen with a prop paladin to bring our blessings and tank for us, a survival hunter for the damage as well as lion. We have our shadow priest uh, actually in the melee group because it does help out healers a lot. Um, it can be moved over depending on the necessary group that needs more healing. Um, but for, I'm just having it here for now. We have a fail druid because we don't have it because we don't have a enhancement shaman. And it will help out the hunter and the prop paladin, mostly the prop paladin, to help them keep threat. Um, we have double fire because they're cranking, and they help out our destruction lower locks, which are also cranking, and gives us uh, utility in the curses. We have a disc priest for PI, the healing, a little bit of damage, the spells as well for the last boss, uh, specifically like the ice face, uh, as well as the disease to spells. Um, and then we have a rest druid for more damage, innervate, tranquility, more healing. Uh, Mark of the Wild. Improved Mark of the Wild. 
Very good. And then a little bit of a change for Horde. Instead of a prop paladin, now we have a demonology warlock. Um, same survival shadow. Instead of a feral, we have a handsman shaman. Double mage, double warlock. Same thing. Discipline priest, same thing. And instead of a rest of druid, we have a rest of shaman. Obviously, you can switch this out if you don't need this much heal or you feel like the healing is a little bit different. But rest of shaman brings a little bit more utility. Just depends on what you feel. I think they're both completely the same, really. It just depends on which one you have. Uh, I would bring either or. Um, but yeah, those are the tier lists for phase two. Um, if you enjoyed, please subscribe. It really helps me out. Um, trying to get to a thousand as fast as possible. Um, also like, share the video if you want to. Um, if you have any comments, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to respond to as many of them as possible. Whether you disagree or agree, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to respond. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.